So last time I made a video, it was on a game jam that I did with Game Maker. And I gotta say, I was having troubles with Game Maker then, and I'm having trouble with Game Maker now. Something had to give, and so I decided to uh, go to a new engine. That hurt me as much as it probably hurt you. Some problems that I had with Game Maker were the licensing system was set up so that if your clock wasn't synced properly it couldn't confirm your license and log you in and i lost like five or six i might have mentioned this before i lost like five or six days working with their support team just to figure out that i needed to resync my clock it's like i already paid like 60 bucks for a license bro you can't just like download that on my computer i have to get logged out what if i needed to like release my game or something so that was some total b if i'm being honest uh, aside from that, this might be a, just a me thing, but their language GML is written kind of like JavaScripty, and uh, under the hood, most game engines are probably you know C, C++. And setting the precedent that something is running like JavaScript when underneath the hood it is not, and those two languages are very very different, I kind of think is a bad precedent to set, and it affects me personally because I'm a JavaScript boy. I love JavaScript, I write a lot of JavaScript, and I know how JavaScript works, and it's frustrating to write a language that seems like it's trying to be JavaScript so bad, but fundamentally can never be JavaScript. So maybe that affects other people more, more or less, but it, it gets under my skin. Godot seems to construct GDScript more faithfully to how the underlying engine is actually going to handle and run the code and what it expects and wants, and it just feels a little bit more seamless to work with if i'm if i'm being honest there lastly the biggest issue was really the kind of like library support uh, i mean in my last game and a couple other ones that i was working on i wanted to have it be a role-playing game and have these like user interfaces that were like really easy to use with stats and abilities and inventories and stuff and it's like the built-in ui for game makers just like nothing they're like, is no built-in UI. They're like, yeah, go f yourself. So, I mean, obviously there's libraries you can use and I've, I found one called GUI, but it just wasn't documented very well. And I had to like basically get in there and make changes into the library itself to get things that I wanted done. And it's like, I don't really want to spend time building a UI library or fiddling around in somebody else's library code. I feel like this should be part of the game engine. Like this should be one of the tools in the tool chain because everyone needs a user interface and most of the user interface components are going to be the same. Do I really need to code my own checkbox or slider? It seems so unnecessary. And the UIs I was creating just look like shit. So I knew I needed to bite the bullet and so I finally ended up going with Godot, watching some tutorials, watching some stuff here and there. And I gotta say it was actually really easy. I, if I'm being honest, I did try Godot like five or six years ago, very briefly for like one week and then I gave up. But now that I've done all this game maker stuff, I'm actually a little bit more prepared and I kind of have an idea of what I'm looking for. So I got in there, started doing some tutorials, and that's when I started this project. So the idea behind the Coup Zone is pretty straightforward. You are a hiker and you're hiking in the Pacific Northwest, specifically the Ho Rainforest. Pretty awesome. It's in Washington State. Check it out if you've never been there and you get lost and you don't have cell service and you have to survive a certain amount of days until you can escape the forest. Pretty straightforward. I wanted to mix elements of kind of an extraction game but also a survival element and it's also turn-based so you can kind of think about the decisions that you want to make because it's actually really important the decisions that you make. You, you, you want to be very careful with each choice and the reason is is because I wanted to integrate two things that I'm very interested in. The first one is economics. Now, obviously this isn't a game about like money changing hands necessarily, although there are traders, um, but rather economics as the book I'm reading right now says is the distribution or I should say allocation of sparse resources to create the most. I probably did, said that incorrectly. Regardless, in this case, you could consider time as a sparse resource or labor and being lost in the forest you have very limited labor before you die of hunger thirst rattlesnakes whatever the hell else is out there so the way i divided that is just you have 30 days to escape 
each day you have 10 action points and each action point is just representative of a, of a block of time let's say like 45 minutes right so i mean you could spend two action points foraging around for food or you could travel to another area to see if you have better chances you could spend action points fishing so on and so forth and this way it's a turn-based game where you're considering your current situation the lay of the land and your options and the best possible set of actions you can take to guarantee survival so yeah i mean a couple weeks you know maybe five six weeks and we have the foundation of a really you know basic two-dimensional tile game here and the user interfaces aren't dog like i would come up with in game maker godot has a beautiful built-in system that you can override and extend to create nice looking themes i just slapped a bunch of stuff in there honestly with the defaults just to get everything working and it worked fine that's what I wanted was some like placeholder user interface that wasn't garbage and it was just I couldn't get it in Game Maker. But here we are in Beautiful and Godot and the engine is getting out of my way so that I can build the interfaces that I need. Obviously everybody is into curb appeal though and so one of the things I did this previous week was completely redo the interfaces so that they actually have at least a modicum of charm to them. Now, I'm not someone, and I get reminded of this all the time, that's particularly interested in uh, aesthetics and the way that something looks fancy. But that being said, I have worked in web design and areas like that, so I at least have an idea about how to make something passable. So I went over to the best friend Figma, and we set up some uh, wireframes of what the possible pages could look like. And if I'm being honest, I kind of cheated and I just used a material theme designer with a couple colors from the game and just sort of replicated a lot of like uh, angular material design components. But honestly, I think it looks good. It kind of looks like a, you know, a knockoff social media platform sort of panel style. But I think that if I mix in some icons and some, you know, a little bit of pixel artwork here and there, uh, you know, you'll get over it. So what? It looks like something you download off the App Store. Uh, you know, it's fine. As long as it looks okay and it doesn't look stock, I call that good. I mean, aside from the, the way the game looks, the real question is how does it play? And I mean, that's kind of been like the core co concept that I've been focusing on this entire time is that how does the game play? Is it fun? Is there even a point of making a game if it's not fun? I mean, I feel like that's what most people miss. And that brings me to my second thing that I'm interested outside of the economics, which is nutrition. I know that's kind of a boring concept and I probably don't look like I'm the healthiest person in the world, but I do think nutrition is interesting. And so that concept is something I try to bake into the game so there's some depth on that field. I mean, we have like your basal metabolic rate is calculated based on your strength score that your character has. And as your strength increases, so does your basal metabolic rate. It also changes how much you can carry uh, and, you know, uh, I guess how fast you do certain things, right? Um, but nutrition is a big key component because you're in the w wilderness really trying to survive. So you need water and food. And uh, if you drink dirty water, you're going to get gastroenteritis. If you're, uh, you know, overweight, you're going to be encumbered and not be able to move as fast. And if you're left out in the elements, then you're going to get hypothermia. And so nutrition, taking care of your body and like monitoring your health status are really important in this game. And I think diving into the depth of that is what gives the game some interesting kind of possibilities and depth that you need to consider while playing. I mean, of course, like one of the most recent things I added to round it out is combat. But the combat is kind of like Pokemon-esque. And to be honest, it's very like two dimensional, right? Because what are you going to do against a black bear? Have you ever seen a black bear? I mean, seriously, have you ever seen a black bear? I have. What do you think you're going to do? So, I mean, there's like guns in the game, right? And like, sure, you know, 12 gauge to the, sh to the face of a black bear, you're probably going to win that one. But who hikes around with a 12 gauge? I don't. I don't think you, you probably don't. That would be, that would probably scare everybody else on the hiking trail, if we're being honest. That being said, like the combat is just naturally punishing because it's realistic, right? If you have a machete, which is something you you may carry around if you're going out in the you know in the wilds or whatever, uh, it's just not gonna do much against a, a cougar, right? You might get lucky, but you probably won't. Like, let's be honest. 
And so I think, of course, the combat does round out the game in, in some in, in that area. And there are fun elements. There are certainly fun. It doesn't mean that it can't be fun, but it is very punishing. Like leaning into a combat build is probably not smart. So I'm trying to add these components to round the game out while still letting the areas that have real depth flourish, like the economics of, of labor and time and, and the nutrition to support yourself through survival. One of these systems that I think could use a little bit more love is the crafting system. Crafting is unnecessarily complicated when it really shouldn't be. And I tried to big brain it and create my own sort of uh, system or design. And I did a decent job, but it turned into sp it just turned into spaghetti, if we're being honest. Like some some straight bolognese in this these files right here. I am terrified to look in the black box of my code. I mean, by no means am I a clean coder, and especially on this project where no one's been over my shoulder. But like this couple hundred lines are just nightmare fuel. So that needs to be redone because currently. I basically have a system that allows a variable amount of conditions to be met to create an object and that's all well and fine, but I can't have a variable set of conditions that create multiple different objects. This came up because I wanted to set it up so that fish could be broken down into meat and bones because we have a system where you can, the crafting system has different recipes. One of the recipes uses animal, animal bones to create an animal bone knife and then you can use the knife in various other recipes, right? Makes sense. Well, animal bones are generally foraged off the ground, but if you fish and you catch like a salmon or a trout, I think logically we should be able to break that down into the meat and the bones. And the meat you can grill and eat and the bones you can use for crafting. Uh, well, I don't have, as I explained, there's not really a way for me to break it down into two different things. The recipe either consumes the fish and gives you a bone or consumes the fish and gives you meat. So I need to uh, un this flow chart and redesign it so that the crafting works. And that is on the to-do list. Speaking of the to-do list, I have some other pretty sweet ideas. I think I'm going to pack in here before we get to the release. Some like really big ones, like I want to add natural disasters. Like lightning should be able to randomly strike a forest and cause a fire. Or if you start a campfire and you walk away before the day ends and it goes out, it should also potentially start a forest fire. And forest fires should spread from forest tile to forest tile to forest tile and do damage if you're inside the forest fire. And then basically destroy all foraging and wildlife, I guess, on those tiles. Also, we should have like floods and earthquakes and other things that should shake the game up and change how the lay of the land is, really. Additionally, I want to make it so that when drones crash, you can salvage the electronic parts for use in crafting. Uh, right now, the drone crash is just a, a random chance that when you get a supply drop, you might just it might just get lost or, or blow up or whatever. But I think there should be a takeaway from that where you can you can still get something positive out of it if you're determined enough. Speaking of the different supply drops and stuff, I think that the survival checkpoints themselves need to be a little bit more varied. This is kind of like the roguelike aspect I wanted to add, where like every run can be is already going to be unique, but um, your character itself, you can build differently. As you get survival checkpoints, you're going to get a randomized bonus card that you can choose one of three of. This is very common in like roguelike games, blah, 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 blah. Um, but right now, they're just very, very boring. They just like boost stats and stuff. So I want to make these more fun and engaging so that you're actually kind of excited when you see that pop up and you say like, oh, this might be fun. Um, even though for the more hardcore people on the medium and the hard difficulties, I actually reduce or completely eliminate these because they're kind of OP if we're being honest. Some of them are just like insane. And if you want that like intense survival experience, you know, you probably don't want like random gifts from God dropping down into this from the sky. Other than that, I just want to add some pizzazz and stuff like that. And then like just really focus on the replayability. I think it's already like a unique experience for sure, but I think that you can kind of get out of it what you want to get out of it in, you know, four or five playthroughs. And so I think I need to add another character. I need to add maybe a different game mode so that once you get the flow of the game and you get a couple wins, it starts to expand. And to that end, I'm thinking like doing some Steam achievements and like different challenges and goals that kind of like push you to maybe try playing in a couple different ways so that you get more replayability out of the game. And, you know, I, I want this game to really give you your money's worth and 
lets you feel like you can try a bunch of different build styles and different approaches and really have fun with it. And it's not just kind of like, you know, a one-time deal. That's it for my first devlog. I feel like I've talked enough. I'm gonna get out of here and let you go. Please check out the Steam store and wishlist the game if you think it looks interesting. Uh, subscribe and follow, hit the bell on YouTube, do all of those awesome things. And hey, leave a comment if you have a suggestion or you think it looks cool or you think it sucks, just let me know. Awesome, all right, see you guys.